Mainstream automakers are slowly, but surely, coming around when it comes to electric vehicles. Some are already bringing new models to market, with pre-production prototypes spied testing on the road, production ramp-ups taking place, and deposits being taken from customers. Others are preparing for production, signing battery deals and memorandums of understanding, and building massive new production lines for their zero-emission products. Some are even going one step further, promising that we'll end up seeing an entirely zero emission fleet from them within the next 5 to 20 years. The motivation to make the switch varies from automaker to automaker. Sometimes companies seem genuinely interested in making the switch after realizing that tightening emissions requirements means that electric is the only financially viable way they can actually remain in business. Others are making the switch reluctantly, pushed by emissions regulations or FOMO to rivals in the marketplace. And frankly, some are, of course, simply trying to claw back some of the market they've lost to Tesla. Regardless of their motivation, we should be all grateful that more companies are finally coming around to electric vehicles as mainstream production cars. Today, there is more electric vehicle choice than we've ever seen before, and that we should celebrate, even if some of the companies making plugins are doing so under duress. For the most part, electric vehicles are being marketed at the higher end of the market. Even more affordable models like the Nissan Leaf are frankly above the starting price for what most people would consider an actually affordable car. And while some brands like Nissan, Chevrolet and Ford are putting their electric vehicles under their mainstream brand and even advertising them on television like their other vehicles, some automakers are taking all of their electric cars and then packaging them under a brand new sub-brand. Audi, BMW, Mercedes-Benz and Volkswagen, not to mention Volvo and many others, have done this to some extent or another. And this week, Hyundai became the latest automaker to do it, announcing that all future electric vehicles would be advertised under the Ionic brand. So today, it felt like a good time to not only cover that news from Hyundai, but also to explain some of the potential reasons why we think automakers are going down the electric sub-brand rabbit hole, as well as outline why, ultimately, I personally think it's a bad idea. First, Let's look at the details of the Hyundai announcement. Made earlier this week via a simple press release, the automaker said it would be turning the success of the Ionic, which is available as a hybrid, plug-in hybrid and electric car, into an all-electric brand with three brand new electric-only models due to launch under the Ionic nameplate in the next four years. The first will be the Ionic 5, a mid-sized CUV, which Hyundai says will be based on its futuristic Concept 45 vehicle that was debuted last year. Following on from this vehicle's launch in early 2021, we'll see the Ionic 6 launch sometime in 2022. It will be an all-electric sedan based on the brand's most recent concept, the Concept EV Prophecy. The last to come to market will be a larger all-electric SUV sometime in 2024, which you've guessed it, will be called the Ionic 7. All three models will be built on a brand new ground-up EV platform known as the Electric Global Modular Platform, or EGMP, probably shared with Kia. Alongside the announcement, Hyundai says it wants the brand to sell 1 million electric vehicles and take 10% of the world's market share in electric vehicles to, quote, become a leader in the global EV field by 2025. Let's put aside any reaction to this until later in the video and turn our attention to the reasons why automakers do the whole sub-brand or unique name thing for electric cars. Most of the reasons stem from marketing, so let's start there. Obviously, when an automaker is trying something unique and new, having a unique and new sub-brand for that technology and vehicles that use that technology is one way of getting some extra marketing clarity. And automakers have been using branding for years to either describe some particular features of a vehicle, such as the gearbox or the engine or the design of the vehicle. And it's how we ended up with systems like Audi Quattro. It's how we got the EcoBoost engines from Ford. And it is, of course, how we ended up with Toyota's hybrid Synergy drive system. But the names I'm mentioning are all technology names within a wider vehicle lineup. And while it's true that Toyota 
Toyota came up with its own sub-brand within the Prius family, it seems today that only vehicles perceived as green get their own unique side effort in marketing rulebooks. Sure, there's luxury brands and there's performance brands, but there's now also green brands. There are, of course, negative and positive effects of having a sub-brand. One of the pluses is that as a sub-brand, there's some recognition of which cars have common attributes. All Prius models are, by their very nature, hybrid of some sort. And in the same way, the ID brand for Volkswagen has become a shorthand to mean electric, as has the e-tron brand for Audi. And of course, Mercedes-Benz has EQ as its electric moniker. If I think about it, Bolt could maybe become shorthand for EV in Chevrolet land if GM makes more than the Bolt and the Bolt EUV, and if Hyundai's press release is followed through on, and really there's no reason to expect it won't be, Ionic will become EV shorthand for Hyundai. A sub-brand of vehicles with similar drivetrains or characteristics can give automakers a clean slate and a fresh start to go with the zero emission vehicle narrative. In BMW's case, I think that's what the iBrand started out as, especially as its inception, it was also a technology demonstrator for new construction methods and green thinking. And it also allows automakers to be seen to be doing the right thing with a sub-brand of completely electric vehicles, especially when the parent brand doesn't have the right image to be associated with key demographics of early EV adopters. That's young, affluent, well-educated people with disposable income and a big love of gadgets that's opposed to your traditional car fan. Sadly too though, these sub-brands allow automakers to hide the price discrepancy with their mainstream models. If your electric cars have their own sub-brand and dedicated page on your website, their overall price, which is still generally more than comparable petrol and diesel models, doesn't look so bad if you're not directly comparing the two fuel sources. It also allows higher priced electric models, often with superior performance, to sit above mainstream models as high-end or luxury cars. Brand recognition can be super helpful for customers looking to buy a new car, provided they know what that brand means and what it stands for. And eventually, using a prefix or a suffix to an existing model name can give you a clue that the car you're looking at is a plug-in. But here's where it gets kind of messy. You see, in the past, sub-brands have been used the exact opposite way, especially for EVs, allowing automakers to offer plug-in vehicles without sullying their bread and butter of gas-guzzling SUVs, pickup trucks, and sports cars. In the case of BMW, the iBrand allowed BMW to dip its corporate toes into the electric vehicle world without causing its mainstream customers to basically freak out. Only when it had developed plug-in hybrid technology it was confident in did BMW shift its drivetrain over to mainstream vehicles, using the iBrand Association to brand its mainstream models with plug-in hybrid drivetrains as being iPerformance. For BMW, the gamble did pay off, but only because it transitioned its technology back to the mainstream brand, keeping the iBrand for more edgy, cutting-edge designs. But in many cases, I see sub-brands not given the same kind of love by their parent companies as their main brand, which legitimizes electric vehicle segregation in the marketplace, which, again, results in a lack of consumer interest and awareness. And here, now, in 2020, with mainstream plug-in models now in the marketplace for more than a decade, I cannot help but think it's time to ditch the sub-brands and be open and honest about how electric vehicles can fit into a company's lineup. After all, the term electric car isn't the transgression it once was, evocative of tree-hugging and subpar performance. No, electric today translates to sexy, powerful, fast, desirable. Thanks, Tesla. So isn't it time that automakers stopped shunting their electric brands off into little sub-brands in the corner? I think it is, because at the end of the day, when automakers are truly serious about the switch to electric, I think they're going to proudly display them as main brand vehicles, maybe with a subtle prefix or suffix to show the different fuel source, just as they have for decades with petrol and diesel vehicles. Until electric vehicles are mainstream and marketed as such, we're going to be stuck exactly where we are today. So. How about it, Hyundai? Spread those electric wings and show everyone that it's okay to plug in without giving electric car fans a backdoor or some kind of euphemism for wanting a cleaner, greener car. 
Well, that's it for today's video. If you'd like to help us make more ones like this, please do like, comment and subscribe. And you can support us using the links below, which now also include Ko-fi, Patreon and Bitcoin. Don't forget too that you can chat with the rest of the Transport Evolved team on Discord, as well as Transport Evolved fans. There is a link below. And if you're a Patreon supporter, you will, in addition, get special access to our Discord chats just for Patreon supporters. Thanks to the folks scrolling by on my right. They are our charged up patrons. Thanks to Jeffrey Songs, to John Lyons and Regine Fellows, our self-driving patrons. And special thanks to our Starman level patrons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerbank and Sean Udea. If you are looking for something else to watch from this channel, then check out this one because Google's algorithm thinks you might enjoy it. So check it out if you haven't. And I'll be back with more great content for you all to enjoy. Until next time, wash your hands, stay safe, wear a mask when you're out and about, and work to become a better, kinder person. Strive for equality, speak out against injustices and bullies, and treat others as you yourself would like to be treated. And please, if you are of voting age in the US and you're allowed to vote, please make sure that you're registered. Exercise your democratic right. I don't care who you vote for, just register to vote. Thanks for joining me, and until next time, keep evolving.